Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are gonna finish Revelation chapter 21 today. Wow, I still can't believe it. I still can't believe that we started this uh, a year ago and just going through a chapter a week, uh, doing a couple verses here and there, 10 minutes at a time that we're now turning a corner and we're going to finish, finish next week, right? We'll finish next week. So if you're studying Revelation 21, of course, you're welcome to join us today, or you can go back to the very first video and watch from the beginning. We're going to pick up in verse nine. Verse nine, still speaking about the new Jerusalem. John is receiving his vision, right? And he says, then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, come, I will show you the bride the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. So remember, an angel takes John and he's having a vision, right? This is, this is something he's seeing. He's seeing the end. It, no, none of these events have happened yet. John is having a revelation. So he sees New Jerusalem, which here is called the Bride of Christ. In other words, what, what else is referred to as the bride of Christ in the Bible? The church, right? Or, or Christians, believers, the holy ones. This will be the place where we live. The church has always been called the bride of Christ in scripture. And just like in a human wedding where a groom and a bride come together, they agree, they vow, they pledge to be together to be faithful to one another till the end of their days. And the scriptures say the two become one flesh. Well, in the future, God and his church will live together and they will live together in a, such a way that the two will become one and they will be there for the rest of their days. You see, for the Christian, we choose reward later. We live in such a way that says we don't take our reward here on earth. We work now for reward later. Those who follow God, the Bible calls them the bride of Christ. We have a choice and the choice is reward now or reward later. Those who choose reward now, they live for the world. They live for the world and they will inherit the world. But one day, the Bible says, the world will burn. The world will be gone. But those who choose to be rewarded later, those who remain faithful, they are the bride and they will be the conquerors. Verse 11 says, having the glory of God, its radiance like the most rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels. And on the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. And on the east, three gates. And on the north, three gates. And on the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. John uses all of these uh, words that sound like precious stones, like gems. Uh, but really, it's radiance that he's describing. You know, he, he uses words like crystal and uh, all of these like gemstones remind us of things that are bright, things that are shiny. And that, that totally uh, goes with everything we know about whenever we see God in the Bible. You know, the Bible always describes God's presence, God's appearance as light. When Moses asks to see God face to face, he says, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And when I pass by, I will shield your face because it, you can't be with me. You can't see my face. Even when uh, Moses goes into the tent of meeting and he comes out, the Bible records that his face shines so brightly that uh, the people request that he cover his face. At the transfiguration, Jesus' entire body is glowing with light. So the new city where we live will have this light. And it'll have this light because God is there. Notice there's also tall gates, right? Tall gates. Now, does this really mean there are pearly gates in heaven? I don't know. But what do gates 
make you think of? Why, why do you put up gates? What do gates symbolize? Usually protection, right? They're a symbol of protection. They're a symbol for security, which is just another way of saying we are safe and secure from all harm in heaven. There'll be no danger to us. There's foundations, right? Strong foundations, 12 foundations. In fact, foundations with the names of the 12 disciples, the 12 tribes of Israel. Surely this means something, right? Well, of course it does. Do we honestly believe there won't be any Jews in heaven? Of course there will be. The Jews were God's chosen people. Israel is God's chosen nation. God has a plan for Christians, absolutely. But let's not forget that God has a plan for the Jewish nation. And they will certainly be there. There is a place for them. Their nations are inscribed on the foundations of the New Jerusalem. Verse 13, he begins to describe the holy city. He says, And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and walls. The city lies four square. Its length is the same as its height. So what does that mean? It's a perfect cube, right? I mean, that's a weird picture for us. to. And again, though, I think John is trying to describe this as best he can, right? He's using human words. Do, do I believe that we will live in some sort of giant cube floating through space? I don't know, but that's what he's describing. And he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stadia. Its length and width and height are equal. He also measured its wall, 144 cubits by human measurement, which is also an angel's measurement. Now, we have no idea how big a stadia is, right? Or a, even a cubit. But uh, we think it's about 1,500 miles square. 1,500 miles square. A cube, 1,500 miles square. 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles, right? We can't even understand that size. Not to mention we can't understand it's a cube. So we're going to live forever and ever inside of a cube? <laughs> but that's what John's describing. I don't think we can just, I don't even think we can understand what John is seeing, you know? I think he's doing his best. I just, I don't think we can understand it. He's going to continue in verse 18. The wall was built with jasper, while the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysosolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysopace, the eleventh jacinth, the twelve amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made with a single pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. Again, human words right? Human words to describe heavenly things. What, what we don't see John describe is dirt, <laughs> right? I don't see him say, oh, there's dirt and grass and trees and butterflies, right? It doesn't sound like mud and soil. It sounds like shiny and bright, which means gorgeous, perfect, beautiful, like a jewel, pearly, you know, we always talk about the pearly gates of heaven or the streets paved with gold. This is where those images come from. Do we really believe that the gates are made out of pearls or that the pavement is, is gold? Probably not, but this is, these are John's words, right? He, he's, he's doing his best. And then he said, I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need for sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So right away, John says, I didn't see a church anywhere. There's no churches. There's no temple. Why? Because you don't need a church anymore. It, this, the, you, you live in the bride of Christ. You are the bride of Christ. You are the church. There's no need for a building because this new heaven, this new earth, this, this is the building. God is the temple. You know, the, the temple in the Bible was supposed to be a symbol of the relationship between humanity and God. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's presence. But we don't need those symbols anymore because now we live with God 
forever. It also says there's no sun or moon. Why is there no sun or moon? Because the sun and the moon were, were sources of light. But Jesus is the light. God is the light. And that he is the pure light. So why do we need imitation light? Why do we need created light anymore? We don't. We have the light of God. Which means there won't be any night. Isn't that weird? There's not going to be any night in heaven. There's no evening you know, sometimes we talk about night as being an end of the day. Like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to put this day behind me, right? I can't wait to go to bed. We won't have that attitude anymore. We will have no more days like that anymore in heaven. So there's no need to rest. Hebrews says that heaven is our rest. Heaven is our continual rest, eternal rest. We don't need to rest from weariness. Our rest now is eternal. But notice that it's only a resting place for those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. John describes a beautiful place. He describes a wonderful place, a restful place, full of the radiant light of God. This is our inheritance, but it's only an inheritance for those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And out of all the questions you can ask yourself, out of all the pursuits, out of all the goals, the most important question of your life is if you were to die today, would your name be found written there? Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.